Actually, it's, it's 12 o'clock right there, so should I call it? Yeah, yeah. 12 o'clock on the All bottom. right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Item number one, the minutes from the December 14th Actually, meeting. Actually, yeah, let me do a roll call. Roll call, I got it. All right, so uh, Jorgensen. Uh, Ellis. Here. Fellows. Here. Geesey. Here. Corey. Here. All right. New business, the minutes from the December 14th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes from December 14th? Yes. yes. Does anybody have any amendments or changes beyond changing my name in the call to order? And in minutes, just for everybody knows, before the meeting started, I called to attention that my name was misspelled in the call to order. So we've got that fixed. Anything else? Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion to approve the December 2022 minutes. I second that. Thank you both. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item number two, fiscal year 2022 impact fee financial report, which is a big bundle of pages that I had a lot of fun reading. <laughs> All right, Travis, I think this is probably you. It is. Um, <clears throat> so I will, as, as you mentioned, it's a bunch of pages. It's even more dense when you uh, just think about it as just a, a ton of numbers that are being thrown at you. So obviously feel free to interrupt me at any point, but I don't plan on going through every single item, uh, just touching on some of the highlights. Um, but again, interrupt me at any point along the line. Um, so just at a high level, um, you know, collections for impact fees were, were, were pretty good last year. Uh, it was 4.1 versus a budget that was probably not set most accurately, but it was COVID and it was before the impact fee increases uh, at 2.4, um, but the prior year was 3.6, um, which ironically wasn't even known when we were creating the budget for 22. So um, all, all that to say is that we were, we were, materially off from what we were thinking last year, but it was a favorable miss, uh, largely driven by the fact that um, that we had this substantial fee increase that took effect in May of 22. Um, on the uh, less positive front, uh, you know, the 23 budget was basically set um, looking at the total fees that were in Ann's 10-year uh, plan, dividing by 10, and just saying we'll collect roughly 10% of it in the first year, which seemed reasonable at the time. Uh, again, prior to interest rate hikes, prior to the softening in the housing market, and I'll get into it in a little bit, but um, you know, the, the single family market in, in particular has been um, whacked pretty hard. Um, and just, you know, in terms of how we're actually going so far this year, Granted, this is the last year's fiscal report, but just to give you a little preview on this year, uh, you know, we're, we're not too far off, you know, rounded, um, we're 1.4%, or I'm sorry, 1.4 million through January. Um, however, that's down 5% because it's 1.36 for this year, and it was 1.44 million for last year. Um, so again, down five percent, um, but it's much better than where we started the year. We had a, we had a good January, and um, when I first put this slide together and, and and didn't have January's numbers yet, you know we were down almost thirty percent. So getting better. Um, you know I defer to most of you who have probably a, a better sense of what's coming, um, but it, you know hopefully, you know we have more Januarys and fewer Octobers, which was uh, which was abysmal. Whoops. So, and this gets into a little bit what I was um, talking about with the, the first quarter basically of this year, as well as last year, what happened. And so if you look at the, the slide and it's broken down by multifamily, single family, which also includes manufactured homes, and then the basically duplexes to sixplexes as, a, as its own category in orange. Um, and, and if you look at it, you know, the, the multifamily, and that would include the duplexes and up, you know, has been relatively stable year over year, 21 to 22, 
both really good years, best, you know, both kind of record years actually. But if you look at the blue portion of the bar in 22, it is dramatically smaller than any other blue bar on the screen. Um, roughly half the number of single family homes. So historically it was about 800 a year. This was uh, 400. Um, so, so again, pretty weak 22 for the single families. And then if you look at it on a month over month basis, you can see that most months were weak. Um, just it got weaker towards the end of the year. Whereas in 21, once you got towards the end of the calendar year, uh, things got stronger. So again, that based on what we're seeing so far, we're seeing more permits come in, but again, one month does not a trend make. Uh, and some of this could also be uh, just PDS backlog for our permitting department, um, just not being able to process things as quickly. Although I wouldn't think that that would have as big of an impact on single families as multifamilies, just because the review um, is not nearly as complicated. Um, getting actually into the 22 report, uh, overall, like I talked, uh, like I mentioned before, the collections were at 4.1 million versus 3.6 the prior year versus the 2.4 that was in the budget. Um, so all, all in all, it was it was pretty good. Um, you know, 59% above budget is mostly a reflection of a poorly set budget as opposed to really great performance. Um, you know, as I mentioned previously, the activity dropped in the second half largely on the on the single family and then you know it really looking for the rest of the year we really don't know i mean i think in the long term it's the same dynamics that have been driving us for the last five years but what that translates to for the rest of 23 and probably into 24 as well um you know i, I think that's a, a big question mark Turning to parks collections in particular, um, you know, most of the park planning areas, um, since overall fees were up, uh, most of the park planning areas were up overall. Uh, you know, central bench, just because it tends to be a small amount, a small dollar amount was a very big percentage increase. Um, you know, southeast was up 85%, southwest was up 47%. Um, but overall, and probably more indicative of, you know, just collections overall is regional was up 5, uh, 4%. Two of the, the park planning areas were down. North River um, was down about 14%. It was at the lowest since 2019, I believe. Um, and I think probably a large part of that is just there's less to fill in out there. Um, you know, and it's some larger development tracks once you get really far out in the Northwest um, that just, you know, I, I've driven by them and the it looks like a lot of site work's been done, but there's absolutely no building going on. Um, and then the West Bench was also down uh, really significantly, actually 59%. Uh, but West Bench tends to be driven historically by uh, large developments. And so you'll have very few permits in a year or two, followed by a ton of permits the following year. So um, still within lot within range of the overall mean of, of where we are just it happened to be one of the down years relative to that mean so what um how did we use the parks fees last year so really um in terms of completed projects and, and trevor feel free to chime in if, if if you think i'm glossing over anything or um missed anything but really the two um big projects for regional parks um, is the Hawkins Range and the Julia Davis Restroom. Um, Hawkins Range is, you know, a relatively recent project. Julia Davis Restroom has obviously been on the books for a while. Uh, I believe um, Hawkins Range, I think, is basically done. We're just waiting for the weather to turn to open it, and the restroom is nearing completion. Um, the, the, the three items in red uh, were basically where we spent some planning dollars last year for the parks maintenance relocation from Julia Davis out to the site by the airport. Ultimately, that's a, um, I'll speak about it later on after the the annual report, um, but that's a, from the, what's that? 
Perhaps I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. Sure. Talk about where Hawkins Range is, actually. Can you remind us where that's located? You want me to take that one, Travis? <laughs> yeah, I, I can give the generalities, but uh, I can walk there. I can't describe it well. Thanks, <laughs> um, hi, committee members, Sarah Arkel, Parks Resources Superintendent. Um, Hawkins Range Reserve is a 400 acre reserve that was um, compiled through three separate land transactions um, that were all finalized, I think, in 2017. Um, the, this property is about, I think, I want to say like 19 miles up Bogus Basin Road. Um, as you're driving up, you probably recognize that kind of modern, really cool looking house that juts out above the um, road and the road kind of curves around that home. This property is directly south of that property. Um, we were able to purchase, like I said, those, those open space properties and then worked to create some um, plan for developing about a six mile loop, which is um, the trail that's in there. And then obviously providing access for uh, hikers, bikers, um, folks uh you know who need an, an an ADA stall and then also horseback riders so that was if I memory serves me correctly this project was funded by grants impact fee dollars and um, open space and clean water advice uh, levy funds and it is complete Travis is correct um we are awaiting um the the uh, weather to change but also for the season to open up in discussions with fish and game because this area has critical winter wildlife habitat um, it will have seasonal closures just like the wildlife management area um, for fish and game does so we're going to be following their seasonality on on this property so if i understand you're talking about if i'm heading up bogus basin road then it's on the left hand side of the road before that's correct it's on the west side of bogus basin road mm -hmm. right what's parking like at that trailhead well, the trailhead will be about the same size as the Grove trailhead. I think we're looking at 28 spots and then there's horse trailer parking as well. And a, and a restroom. Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, thanks Sarah. Okay. Anytime. Uh, moving on uh, to Central Bench Franklin Park, uh, which we all got to see was, was the big project out there. Uh, West Bench um, working on Pine Grove. Uh, North River, uh, although there's four listed here, I would say that the uh, the bulk of the effort right now, and Sarah, please correct me if I'm wrong, is going into Primrose Park, uh, which is a new park that we're using the former, uh, what was going to be Fire Station 13 site uh, for a park. Uh, South Southeast Barber Valley, that was the Bowler Green up that was basically completed last year, although it was finally closed out in fiscal 22. Uh, and Southwest, uh, Molnar work there continues. However, the impact fee funded portion, um, just in terms of the dollars, is, is completed. So there's no more um, impact fee funding being spent there uh, in 2023. Yeah, sorry. sorry, Travis. It would be awesome to have a map of all of these sure we can we can do that i'll uh, i'll work with parks afterwards to get get that put together i mean not a huge rush or anything but just would be helpful yeah no i mean it would be interesting i think for all of us um committee members put a finer point on where some of it is yeah yeah i don't blame you for not knowing where you know all of these are we do have 96 parks across the city so um <laughs> We're happy to provide that for you. Uh, Molinar in Southwest is uh, Maple Grove, right? Maple Grove and um, <laughs> anyway, we we could spend all day talking about where these places are, but yes, we will provide you with a map showing um, the location of these uh, regional and um, regioned parks. Awesome, it, thanks. It, one thing, um, and I don't know if we, I'm assuming that we we have it somewhere, and I don't know if this would be helpful um, for what you're looking for. But what? I, let me ask the question first. Parks. I'm assuming somewhere we have a GIS um, map that, that locates that 
you know, has all these mapped on it. Yes, Doing absolutely, that. Travis. We absolutely do. Committee members, it would not be hard for us to pull this together. Because that would be kind of cool because then you could see all the parks and then just focus in on the ones you care about. Or are you just looking for the, you know, the ones on this page and the uh, then what will be on the next slide, which are the 23 parks? I think what I would suggest, Travis, is we will put together just like a PDF figure that shows where these parks are located. Um, because I think what you really want to just see is cross streets just so you could get, a, mm -hmm. you know, a sense of where they are and go visit them if you'd like. Um, with regard to interactive maps, I mean, to be honest, you could Google any one of these sites and, and you would be able to um, find them. But we do have open data in, um, in our uh, web city website as well that you, would allow you to look through our GIS files. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's just helpful when we're talking about, I'm just a very visual person, so it's just helpful to kind of visualize where they are. So it's not critical, it's just would be interesting. Sure, we can do that. Thank you. Uh, moving on to what's happening um, or what's being funded uh, next year, um, or that gets confusing, in the current fiscal year, um, you know, we're going to finish up the, the park restroom. There's a, there's a few dollars for a, uh, for a large uh, um, pickup for, uh, for, for parks, a, a dump truck basically. Uh, Spalding Ranch is going to get more work done, the parks maintenance uh, relocation, but again, I'll talk more about that later. And then, um, you know, move, continuing the from the planning work that's been done on, on veterans. Um, a couple of these projects for Central Bench and North River have been deferred largely due to staffing capacity. Uh, so those will not be moving forward this year. Central Bench, we already we already spoke about the Franklin Park is effectively uh, done. I think there's just a couple uh, kind of final punch li punch list type items being done there. Uh, Primrose, Travis, sorry yes. to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I just wanted to um, let you know we are working on construction of the splash pad at the moment, and I believe that was the last feature that was impact fee funded. Um, and in addition to that, there is, uh, as you saw on our trip, you know, ongoing construction for uh, committee members for that um, gate park. So um, we should be done with the splash pad here in the next few months, actually, in Great. time for summer. This is Molinar. I'm sorry, that was Molinar. I'm sorry, I thought we were talking about Molinar. All right. I'm, gl I, I, I'm glad. I thought I was confused. I, I, I thought I was confused. Okay. My bad. I'm sorry, you all. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. It's all good. All good. Um, and then, and then Stuart Gulch, another one that's been on the uh, on the books for a while. Um, that one should be moving forward uh, this year. Um, Molinar, like I mentioned, and 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 Sarah did. There, there is more going in there. Um, because of the total project, and I'm giving rough numbers, is a, um, I think it's right around a $1.5 million project, but the impact fee funded portion is just a little over 1 million. Uh, so a lot of, um, so all the impact fee funded amounts have been paid. And so it's just, um, it's just continuing to, uh, <clears throat> to use city dollars that are, that are part of the project. Um, moving on to, to fire collections, um, really this is just a story of, you know, the fees continue to, or collections continue to increase. Uh, there were no projects in 2022. However, looking forward, obviously we have the, uh, the big facility on the Northwest uh, Fire Station 13, which we will also talk a little bit more about. Um, and then the engine for that, uh, new station is also going to be partially funded by impact fees. On the police side, again, same story, collections were up. Um, we have almost paid off the micro district. And when I say pay off, um, the capital fund advanced the funds necessary to complete the project. As of the transfers that we just did at the end of the first quarter of 23, there's about $65,000 remaining. So um, that is 
nearly done and then we can focus on funding the the next project which is about 10 percent of the square footage at the new northwest fire station is going to be check-in space or i believe they technically call it touchdown space for police officers so there's a, a little over a million dollars that's going to be um paying helping to pay for that station and that was all i had for the end of year report um are there questions? Oh, I, I guess the the one thing that's not addressed in the slides, but is in the in the book, is um, and it's not in the slides just because there's really nothing to talk about. Uh, is just the aging report. Um, you know, I think it was. Um, I think I, I forget which one it was last year that was getting close, but obviously projects have spent it all down, and so there's really nothing that has any significant age to it at all as, as you could see in those aging graphs that are in the that are in the annual report but um, other than that if there's any questions um, happy to try to answer them thank you travis anybody got questions i think we asked them as we went uh, colleen do you have any questions no <laughs> <laughs> thanks, no thanks. questions. Good. It's everybody else. I couldn't see you. So I want to make sure. Okay. Thanks, Travis. So that was fiscal year 2022 report. On to. I think uh, that one was uh, for a motion to vote on. Oh, as well. Yes, there is a request to approve those. Helps by the agenda. <laughs> All right. Can I get a motion? I'd like to move that we approve the FY22 impact fee annual report. Thank you, Colleen. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Jill. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right. Item C on our agenda fiscal year 2023 project cost increases. Um, all right. Well, thank you. Um, as uh, as well, I guess just as a real quick aside, just because of sequentially how it's laid out in the in the memo that everyone or the information packet for the meeting. Uh, before we move on from to this, I just want to point out that Exhibit B, which was immediately following the annual report, just uh, showed the the change to Ann's or I shouldn't say the change, the update to Ann's. 10-year uh, CIP plan, uh, an impact fee plan that she put together last year uh, in in February. Um, it just shows the the update that we're doing to re to reflect the change of attribution of fees collected in Harris North that aren't going to North River, that are instead going to Southeast Barber Valley that we spoke about last time in the resulting fees per residential unit um, based on based on that change. Um, and, and there's also uh, a better map than I had at the last meeting that I actually emailed around, uh, I believe it was in early January, um, but just to try to clear up the confusion around what was in and what was out of that, that area that we're gonna change the attribution on. Um, but it's, uh, it's basically everything we spoke about with and as we noted in the meeting, I think it's um, Hermosa Hills, I believe it is, and the Pravada uh, are both already in Southeast Barber Valley. So it's really just the development primarily that's there today in, uh, in Harris North. But anyway, yes. just I wanted, wanted to, to point say, that out. I wanted to say I did appreciate that map. It was way better than the rectangle that we had before. <laughs> <laughs> it was very clear. I'm assuming the, the sort of northeast edge of that just bumps right up against the wildlife area. Am I correct on that? Uh, co well, correct. It's it's above, I believe, what they're calling the pinnacle out at Harris North. Okay. So it's um, it, it's theoretically we could have drawn that that can, that kind of northern boundary line really at any level. Um, however, there just wasn't anything up there. Um, or planned to be up there um, just because the topography is such that 
you actually start moving down the hill a little bit on the backside of, of um, Travis, this is Trevor right up there. Yep. Just, I think that the boundary that you're talking about would be the, the area of city impact, not necessarily the city limits, but where the, the city has shown their impact area to the north there. Okay, the one I was looking at is more the eastern side if we're looking at it. So you've got the, I, I'm just wondering, did we push that basically out to the edge of the wildlife management area? Because that, that seems to me that that would be the future sort of, and all development would stop at that wildlife management area. So the long skinny like, part. Exactly. Correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry that I missed the question. No, I think, you, I think we got it. Okay. <laughs> we got there. Yeah, the point being, uh, we're, we're attributing fees from areas that can only leave their home by going through Southeast Barber Valley. We're crediting it to Southeast uh, Barber Valley rather than uh, North River. That makes good sense. And I understand what you changed from Exhibit B, and that also makes good sense. All right. Uh, just uh, there's three projects that I wanted to talk about. Um, unfortunately, these probably won't be the only three projects that go over budget. Uh, they're just the ones that are in the that are being impact fee funded in 2023, and where we have a very high confidence that the that the numbers are uh, in some cases meaningfully higher than. What the what was in the ten year CIP plan that we put together last year, and as a result, we'd like to re request an increase that only reflects the increase of the inflationary adjustment. Uh, clearly, if we get into increases that go beyond the inflationary environment, we or the inflationary adjustment, we'd have to, you know, re recalculate all the impact fees and change those. That's not what we're contemplating it's just increasing by the 13.1 percent that um that we increase fees for in 2023 fiscal 2023 um and i guess i basically just read you this slide um so just moving on to the <laughs> the, 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 the punch line is and it's better laid out in the memo, but uh, Fire Station 13, uh, again, in, in Ann's um, CIP plan, it was at 10.4 million. Uh, if you take 13.1% on top of that, that adds another 1.4 to get you up to 11.8 million. On top of that is what I mentioned before, which is because 10% of the space is being used for police, uh, we're using um, some police impact fees for that. It's about a million dollars based on what the original plan dollars were. Um, and then that is also increasing 13.1% uh, to $1.2 million. And the one thing I, I want to point out um, is if you look at the, the total cost, we think that this station, um, which was in the plan at 100% impact fee funded, will probably run right around $15 million, plus or minus a little bit. We're still uh, refining the the scope and design work to try to get that in as low as we possibly can. Uh, but at the far right of this slide, you can see that the city percent at 13% and 22%. Uh, and when we put the plan together, that was 0%. So um, just wanted to point out, since especially the fire stations were a uh, somewhat contentious uh, that you know, we're not trying to decrease city funding. We're just trying to limit the increase. Uh, the second item is the is the engine for Fire Station 13. Uh, we've already put the order in for the for the equipment. Uh, that was eight hundred and fifteen thousand dollars relative to a budget of seven hundred and eighty. Uh, and on top of that 815 that we've already prepaid for the engine, uh, there's going to be another probably $150,000 of, of equipment cost, bringing the total for that engine to about 960 grand. So again, it was 100% impact fee funded in the plan, and now it's going to be about 92% impact fee funded, even with the 13.1% increase. 
Uh, and then the final, uh, the third and final uh, project that we'd like to request increase impact fee funding for are the, the park central shop, uh, the maintenance facilities that we're gonna relocate uh, from Julia Davis Park out by the airport that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and this one was broken down in the in the in the uh, and CIP and impact fee plan into two parts um, based on growth that was attributable to the current 10 year period versus the next 10 year periods. So these are very long lived assets um, and they're also building it to accommodate future growth in the community. And so um, it was sketched out as basically a $6.4 million total project of which roughly half was impact fee funded. And of that half that was further broken down in half by, um, by which period we were talking about. So uh, effectively a quarter of the total cost was gonna be paid by uh, current impact fee collections Another quarter is going to be paid by the next 10 years impact fee collection. And then the rest is going to be paid for by the city. Uh, as you can see by our estimated total cost, and I just found out that that's probably uh, underestimating by about a million dollars. We're putting in a little bit more than, uh, than the original percentage contemplated. And it's the project um, obviously is wildly more expensive than we originally thought. And so, again, not trying to um, change the, the, the project dollars that are in the plan, just adjust it for the inflationary adjustment. So increase both this period's collections and the next 10-year period collections by about $207,000. So I have a question about this slide. Sure. Particularly the city percent on the 21.3 million. So the city is saying basically 17% of that 21.3 million will not be coming from, from the impact fees. Am I reading that correctly? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? So the city percentage on parks central shop growth is 16.8% on the slide. Are they saying the city is gonna pay 16.8% of that $21 million and the rest is gonna come from impact fees? Is that the plan? Uh, no, I, I apologize. I think that the, I inverted the math there because okay. it, it's the vast, vast, vast majority is uh, is city dollars. And there's and just for your uh, reference, there's actually no other outside funding for this, no grants or anything like that. So every dollar that's not the either the one point six or the one point eight um, is coming from city tax collections. Okay. okay. Ooh, that, that makes a lot more sense. Good. So that number should actually be like 83%. Then. Correct. Okay. Okay. Then, then I'm more comfortable with this. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, I will correct the record for the final minutes. That sounds fine. All right. Any questions on the presentation for the 2023 increases? I just want to confirm uh, the Northwest Fire Station. That's off Bogart and Hill. Is that the proposed site? I, I don't know if Romeo wants to respond, but I believe it's actually, it, it's off of Bogart, but it's it's closer to state, I believe, than, than oh. Hill. But I, That's av accurate, Travis. It's Bogart and state. And I do have a map if you want to see a picture. Yes. <laughs> I think Joe would love that. Love that. <laughs> Let me see if I can stop sharing here. So hopefully you all can see that. Um, kind of in the center of the screen here, this is Bogart and State. Um, this is the location of that station. And then that, that gold color is kind of the five minute response time from that station. So Michael, you're familiar with that kind of stuff. I am, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's the area it'll cover. Nice. This is a beautiful slide. Okay, we really do appreciate it. Look at how it has pretty, it has There's color. A lot of information here. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's fantastic. It's always good to go second because you can be prepared. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, I'm kidding you, Sarah. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Romeo. I appreciate that. Um, I had a, a question. Uh, I think it's on page two of the memo that Travis prepared for uh, DFAC. It, it talks about uh, two engines for growth, one for each of the Northwest and Southwest stations. I'm just curious, or I don't see anything about a Southwest station engine in in the memo. So is oh, are we not focused on that this year? Or I'm just curious. correct. Um, although I'm sure Romeo would have a different answer. I haven't even started thinking about the the South slash Southwest station, let alone the engine for that station. So oh. I mean that that's uh, multiple years out in the plan. Okay. Um, timing exact timing tbd but certainly not anything we we're contemplating right now and certainly not an engine we've actually ordered <laughs> thank you although with lead times what they are we might want to think about ordering it next year <laughs> all right any other questions we need a motion to approve Well, I get to improve. I get to I get to do the motion for the the big ask. <laughs> uh, I move that we um, uh, approve the recommended increases for the projects as noted. Fire station, engine, the expansion, etc. Basically, the fiscal year 2023 project cost increase. Yes. The budget increases, yes. The budget increases for fiscal year 2023. I'll second that motion. Thank you both very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item on our list is adjournment. Unless anybody had anything else they wanted to say. Travis, did you have anything else you feel? No, I didn't. I was just going to. Uh, thank you for uh, your patience as I, I, you know, I'll correct that error that I had in the uh, in the city percentage, but suffice it to say, it's very small. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. The impact you... V portion, I mean. Is very small. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is rather large. Right. Do we get a motion to adjourn? Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Michael, adjourn. I'll second that. Thank you very much. This is way easier, you guys. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.